Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, sweet. You can see that. All right, cool. Hello everyone, Casey here again for another painting stream. Tonight was an impromptu one. I thought I'd just go ahead and, and stream on painting, working on a black cat. <laughs> Adjust my camera real quick. See if we can get that in view here. Hold on a minute. There we go. Okay. So let's paint along. I'm getting close to finishing this little little kitty. This is for a commission. He's doing the fine deep fine highlights on on this one of the black cat. This is the model from uh, Warhammer Forty Thousand from the. Eldar range. I don't remember the name of it. Unfortunately. Just adding the detail onto the face. Make it look nice and pretty. So we're going to finish this up. And then we're going to work on the Snow Queen, the Ice Queen, I should call it, Samira, the Ice Queen. This was a 3D print. That the customer made, and here's the base that it's going to be on, an ice base. Just doing some fine, fine highlights on the black. And then I'll work on the gold. I mean, the silver that I got on it. And just building up the black from Abandoned Black and adding some Eschen Gray into the black and then that's highlight was with the Skaven Blight Dinge and then some stump, Storm Vermin Fur and then added some Skin Tone Flayed One Flesh and then some final highlights is with Pellet Witch Flesh and this is all mitts into a black gray 
So I started with the black and I just started mixing up and adding more and more. So I'm building up my highlights. Some dust on it. Pretty happy with how that's looking. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on the silver. Got some silver bits. Kitty cat's got a necklace right here. And then some uh, ankle bracelet. And then it's got something over here on the tail. So a little bling. It's also got some earrings. This kitty cat is decked out. So we're going to start with a base coat of lead belcher. I like to add some Lamia Medium into my paint just to help it flow. It helps with the blending. These are all Citadel Games Workshop paints. I transfer them all into dropper bottles, make it easier for me. And I'm just using a regular dry palette, weld palette. That's it up. Using the back end of my brush. Cat's got a little goatee right here. It's got a little ring holding the holding the his beard. Fun little model, real quick and easy to paint up. Right. Make sure it's staying in focus here. Slightly blowing on it to help it dry. All right, so now we're going to do a wash. We're going to do some Nuln Oil. This helps get into all the cracks and crevices and gives you instant shading.
one though, and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll go ahead and paint the eyes. From the uh, reference picture that the client sent me, the, the cat's got really yellow glowing eyes. So, yeah, some recessed pupils. So we'll go ahead and use some pallid witch flesh, which is a, an off-white color. While I'm doing this, instead of just painting over the black, is this will make the eyes pop more. Nice fine tip on the brush. Hold your breath and just slowly breathe out while you're applying the paint. up around it. Put a little pupil in the middle. The fur on, on on the tip of the tail and the belly, and then right up here around the, the head, I want to make that a little lighter. So I'm going to add some of my um, pallid witch flesh onto my gray mitts to get a, a lighter color. And just paint on the, the tips of the hair. out a little bit more. Has some hair on the ears. It's kind of hard to see it because it's a black <laughs> model and small. So the highlight. I'm just going back in with the black and separating it. So the hair, the fur. Looks like a piece. Stray uh, paint mark. That happens. Let's go back and fix it.
hair on the tip of my ears. Alright, so that breaks that up. Really nice. So I'm going to take my um, flush tone. And add a little bit of my pre that gray mats. Lighten it up with the skin. And put this on the, the face, the nose, and around the mouth. face a little more alive looking. Whenever you're doing nose whenever you're doing a character that's partly human or has human features. You know like a, a fantasy character like an orc or a, a troll, goblin, things like that. Normally they're green or different colors, not your typical skin tones. If you add skin tone paint into your mixture for the final highlights, it makes them look more natural. Let's see if that comes out on the camera. Alright, so like I said, the eyes are kind of glowing yellow. So I'm going to do a little bit of Lamenter yellow glaze over the eyes, and because it's white, that'll give kind of a yellow tint to the eyes. Oh, hold on. So I don't want to wash it, I just want to gently put it across the eye just to tint the color. Just to give it that impression that it's yellow. There we go. Right, so I'm going to do a blue glaze. I'm going to do blue or do purple. Let's see here. Looking at my reference picture, hold on. some Gilliman blue glaze, but I'm going to thin it with my Lamia medium, so it's not too strong. I'll pull over here at my palette. Roughly a 50-50. You know, want it thin, but not super colored, super uh, pigmented. So I'm going to test it. That's still kind of... That should be fine. Do a test on my thumb just to see the consistency. And I can still see when testing for glazes, I can still see my skin underneath. So it's just tinting the color. You can also do this on a piece of paper that's got writing on it. And if you can still see the writing underneath it, it's a good glaze. It's best to build up your glazes than one thick one. It's easier to build up color, add color, than it is to take away. So 
got a uh, jewel here so we'll paint that according to the picture reference I dropped my brush according to the picture reference it's got uh, emerald jewels so we'll paint one of those purple that to dry. I'm gonna take some juicy violet. It's a it's a small area so I'm gonna do the same thing like I did with the eyes where I paint it with an off-white and then shade it. I'm in focus. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. A nice point on the on it. And I'm pulling the paint down. So when I lift my brush, that's when the majority, that's when all the pigment is going to settle. So we'll let that dry. And I'll do some quick highlights. <laughs> Hello there. Welcome. I got her right here. Be working on her nuts. See, she is actually rather large than the picture I showed you. And I got the base too. I'm just finishing up the, the kitty. That's the kitty cat. hitting the raised areas where the, my light is catching to apply the highlights. How are you doing tonight? Samara said. Yeah, Samara said. How are you doing tonight? Or today? Hope you're having a good day. I'm sure you're very excited to see the work done on this.
Right, so now we're going to do a final highlight with Storm, Her Storm Host Silver. It's a bright silver. So this is just for the more prominent highlight, you know, raised areas where this light's going to catch it more. So it'll be brighter. Just the bright highlights. That shade with the purple didn't turn out how I thought it would be, so I'll go ahead and paint that in there in just a minute. Thank you for following. I do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I forgot what I was going to do. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to add some more known oil to the metal just to darken it up a bit. This model turn, is turning out really nice. I think you'll be quite happy with it when you get it. I don't think we talked about how we were going to do the base for this guy. Were we going to do it um, kind of like an ice snowy base to somewhat close to this? Maybe not with the spikes, but like just snow and ice on it. That's what that was my thought. I just want to run that past you and see if that's what you had in mind. The cat's got earrings, which I think is really funny. So I'm just painting those in. Alright. I'm happy with the way it's looking. I'm going to add, do that purple jewel, the amethyst jewel, real quick. This is the first shade, Xersus purple. Then we'll add a little bit of highlight of the Gene Stealer purple. And then a final highlight of the Decala lilac. I apologize if I butcher the names. <laughs> I might just say this purple and this color and this color. So, just to make it easier. That's why I show it on the camera so people see what I'm talking about. I'll show the palette in just a second. Right. 
So we're going to go from this dark purple, and then this color, the mid-tone, and then the light lilac color. And then we'll add a bit of white for the uh, reflective dots on the jewel. So we'll get right in here. Well, actually, let's do this. Let's paint that black. So it's nice and dark. Looks like we've got a couple here on the necklace. Take it off camera and gently blowing on it to help it dry. Just hitting the lower corner of the area because with jewels when the light comes down the highlights are actually you know let's say that where my light is it's coming down from the top well normally your highlights will be up at near the you know right here they'll be They'll be right here where this, the light's hidden. Well, with the jewels, it's actually down here. It's down at the bottom. And then you'll have a white dot where it's reflecting because the glass, it reflects it back up. It's kind of hard to see it on this because it's so small, the area. really good. But this is an LR model so it does have a lot of jewels. <laughs> I'm just black outlining the, the side of it. areas just to dot up in the corner so. All right. now, I'm happy with that so we'll set that aside and we'll start working on figure out best way of holding this. You know what? I'm going to do the base. Let's do the base. It'll be quick and easy. Alright, so this is the base that she's attached to. She stands right in this area. Just like that. So as you can see, that's my hand. She is rather large. A lot of area to work on. I'm just trying to think how I'm going to do the ice again. <laughs> Hold on one second. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna paint it an icy blue. So we're gonna base coat the whole thing with ceramite white. Then do a glaze of Gilliman blue. Actually, I'm going to do a brightly wash of Kolia green shades, like turquoise color, and then the blue. Excuse me. I'll do some dry brushing and build up the white. So when I'm painting, I tend to do a few things at one time. So while I'm waiting for a wash to dry, I'll work on another model. Big old brush. Which will be really nice because the majority of the Ice Queen, she's in dark colors, so the white will be a nice. Uh, contrast. Hair dryer, dry it off. Sorry about that. Dry it off real quick. Do another coat. As you see I'm going the opposite direction. When applying paint like the base coat, it's best to do it in a few, you know, one to two, uh, two to three thin layers, then one thick layer. Because if you do one thick one, it, it obscures the detail and everything. It just you don't get a smooth base coat. But when I do the first layer, I'll do it one way, and I'll let that dry, and then I'll paint the other way. So in essence, you're doing kind of a crisscross with your layers and that helps build up and you get a nice solid base coat much much quicker
blast with the air the hair dryer. Nice, cheap air hair dryer is a great investment. Helps speed up drying time. You want to keep it on the low setting. So it's a nice gradual drying time. Uh, drying. All right. So now, majority that's base coated. It's not a solid coat. I can still see the black underneath it, but the brush strokes actually add to a texture for the ice, because ice isn't a, a solid white. Do the Colia green shade, which is a it's actually a turquoise color. And it looks really good over white. I'm going to build up the white back up after I do this. Just making sure I get the whole area covered. Make sure I have a nice, smooth application. It's not pooling anywhere. And we'll let 
get that dry. I'll come back with the darker blue. Check my reference picture right at the moment. Hold on one minute. There it is. All right. So I'm going to use a pen vise, a little hand drill, to hold the pen I have on here for now. So let me see if this will actually work. Without breaking it. It's not tightening on the pen, hold on a minute. <laughs> No, it's going to be ice. How you doing, Justin? I got the kitty done that he wanted. Little black kitty. That's all done. I'm just trying to figure out a good way of holding holding the model. Hold on, bear with me. There we go, that's the one I want. Frozen or dropping frames? No, I'm not dropping frames. No, I was just off camera for a bit. No, it looks like it's doing well. So, here we are. I'm going to start working on Samira, the Ice Queen. And the picture that I'm going by. She has dark black armor with purple trim, but a very pale skin tone, obviously, for the for an ice queen. But she has glowing eyes. That was a very cool. Let's see if I can get this. So this is the reference picture I'm going by. Some bits that I missed with the file, so I'll take care of that real quick. If I can get this, that's not the one I want. There's the one I want. Some bits that I missed right here to smooth it out. There 
Is it working better for you now then? Because it looks like it's running well over here. I just noticed that there were some parts on the leg that didn't get smooth, so I'm just doing that real quick with the file. Checking something real quick. Never fails once you think you got all the cleaning done and then you prime it, then you find some other bits that need to be cleaned. And let me try that the knife though. There we go. So we're going to move some things out of the way here. That's what happens when you start the stream on the fly, you're not prepared. Alright, so now I have a handle. just to cover up bare plastic, or bare resin, I should say. Let's smooth it out. Alright, skin tone. And I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the skin tone here. We'll do it this way. <laughs> That's the problem with doing paint holders with the pin vise. You don't have a big base to hold it on. All right, I'm gonna have. I want her skin to be pale, so I'm mixing up, making a skin mitts of. Rakar flesh and some flayed one flesh. This is going to be a kind of a dark flesh tone for the base, and then we'll build up the, the lighter tone, adding pallid witch flesh.
as you can see it's a gray tinted skin tone so I wanted that base paint which is a little thicker to cover the black using a pin vise to hold this. I don't have enough strength. Okay. This is going to take a few few layers to cover that black. start from the inner point most recessed area which is usually the skin when working on a model right. so let that dry we'll come back to our ice base All right. Cover those up so they don't dry. All right, so now we're going to paint in the recesses with the blue glaze. color in there then I'll do a, some dry brushing and just go back and forth building up my shades and highlights The blue is what really brings it out. Justin, just to let you know, I have those pieces for your group ready for me to work on tomorrow. I'll start working on it tomorrow. And probably have them on my stream tomorrow night. Start working on some of those. So you can tell the group. other piece I'll work on that this weekend I gotta clean it up and then assemble it then I can 
I'll use the airbrush on that. The ice. Blast with the airbrush, uh, the airbrush with the hair dryer. brush of the Pratsy White. I'm not going to use the big brush, I'm going to use my small brush, small dry brush here, just so I can control it a little bit more. It takes a little bit longer, but I can get crisscross texture easily. And the texture, the chalkiness that dry brushing tends to do will give a nice texture to the ice. I just don't want to have a whole lot of paint on my brush. mice. I did this on the ice gullum that I did recently from Malifo, the little ice creatures. Quick and easy. Turned out really cool. Really nice. Do 
and crisscross motions to add more texture to it because it's a the resin itself is has some texture to it but it overall is pretty smooth so if I do the dabbing motion that adds texture to it too but I'm liking the look of this this looks really cool I'll have to paint up that ice giant that I got Justin on stream paint him up and paint up that fire giant too those will be fun I'm done with this dry brush I'll go back in and deepen the shadows Just back and forth All right, so now I'm gonna to go to rack white which I think is a well proxy white's brighter yeah, that's brighter Oh, that's okay. I'll go back. I'll do go back and forth. Yeah, that rack white's uh, off white. That comes up on there. Ooh, that's the Pratsy white and the off white rack white's a like an age shell. That's okay. That's all right. It works. Happy mistakes. I don't think I'm going to go with the, my brush and do some lines of pure white just across it. Now with the, the recess, I'm going to do some recess shading with Drakenoff Nightshade, which is a dark blue shade compared to the Gilliman blue. So I'm just trying to paint down toward the base. Just add some dark shadowing. Separate the, the ice spikes. cool base. Very nicely sculpted. Now, I'm going to add some purple 
in the recess is just a some variety of color. It's that juicy violet shade. Make sure it's dry. I'm just going to take a smaller brush. I'm just painting in the general area just to add some color variation. brush down to the recessed areas and then when I lift up my brush that's where the majority that's where the most pigment from the wash will be left some spit blending to blend out that edge. areas, the sharp edges. Thin it with some 
on the medium. Just to help with the flow well. Lamia medium is kind of like a glaze or slow dry retardant. It's basically the same binder that they use in the paint, it just doesn't have the pigment added. It's the additive. Looks great for thinning your paint more transparent compared to using water and it's great for adding to the shades to thin them and also to glazes or, or whatever all right so now I'm just going to dry this across the most prominent areas and just make some Lines going here and there. to add some more texture to the ice. Hello to all the viewers. Welcome. I'm just working on a uh, ice base for a model. Just fine tuning it. everyone had a good day today or is now having a good day by watching me ramble on and paint I'm painting ice <laughs> this is for a model Samira the ice queen it's a 3d print for a client of mine sculpted by the very talented Joshua Black. It seems my music keeps cutting in and out.
you have any questions, just go ahead and pop them in the in the chat, or you just want to say hi. If you're working on hobby stuff, also, let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing. Or if you're playing games or or whatever. Because the models aren't be fitting right in here. So I just wanted to make sure the base was finished before I attached her. Make it easier for me to hold. I can paint her up. No, I haven't. AQ3D. Can't read your name because of the, the color. I apologize, I can't read your name. <laughs> it's a green color on the white, so it's very hard for me to read it. I apologize. But no, I haven't heard of AQ3D. But hello! <laughs> Thank you for joining in. <laughs> Painting her nails. She said she wanted to paint her nails. I could go paint her nails. I got some neon colors I can use. <laughs> I hear giggling in the other room. Oh, they're pink. You sure you don't want moot green? You like that color. <laughs> Ooh, color changing. I think I'm getting to a point where I'm happy with how this is looking. All right. I was not a painter using a pen vise holder, but it's very difficult to hold on to. So that's why I was working on the base so I can go ahead and attach her. I know the back end of the cloth. If I put it too close, I won't be able to reach it. But if I do it this way, I can still reach that with the, the brush. But that's what she's going to look like. So let's go ahead and attach her. Glue her on there. Just scraping off the primer on the bottom of the feet so the glue can attack the glue to that to the model instead of the paint. Right, 
Yeah, it was an impromptu, Nathan. I decided, hey, I'm painting. I might as well do a stream. And we're painting um, an Ice Queen today. Thank you for joining me. It's good to see you again. A little earlier stream time. I started at 5. So we'll see how long I last today. <laughs> but it seems I'm starting to get more people in, so I'll probably just hang out. I know, I, it's really cool. I'm just holding to make sure that dries before I get any more work on. And then she has a, a pet little kitty cat. That I worked on earlier. Majority of her her armor is black with a purple trim. Yeah, the the cat model is from uh, Games Workshop Warhammer Forty Thousand. It's the familiar for one of the Eldar characters. For some reason, I can't think of the name, y Yarkrin or something like that. But yeah, she was really fun. This was fun to paint up. This, uh, it, the name of it is Samiri the Ice Queen. And it was a 3D sculpt and printed. It was sculpted by Joshua Black. And my friend Justin, he printed it up. It's a 3D, on his 3D printer, it's resin. So we're painting this up for, for a client of mine. Alright, so that blue is set. Hey Erica, hi Novi, welcome. My name's Casey. Glad you could join us. All right, so now I'm going to do another uh, base coat. I got paint on my fingers <laughs> of the skin with the mixture I have here. This color. And that was a mixture of these two colors. Rakar Flesh and Flayed One Flesh. Yeah, kind of a pale skin tone. Thank you. And just to correct you, it's not spelled like that. It's it's my initials K and C. So, but not to. That's okay. If you just write out Casey, that's okay. That's that's cool too. All right. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to look at my reference picture. Here on my tablet. So we're going to paint her up like that. There you go. <laughs> I 
Yeah, this is the first on Wednesday. I usually stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I thought I went ahead. Thank you. Let me look at the name. Is it Nov? N O V V? Is that correct? I think I got that correct. Nov, hello. Thank you for for following. Uh, trying to think what what color I want to do this nuts. All right. So we're going to work on Nets Lair. <laughs> so we're going to paint the pants here, and then it's the same color on the on her sleeves. So it's a dark brown. So I'm going to do some dryad bark with Gorthor brown added to it. Erica, thank you for following. Welcome to the show. <laughs> well, yes. Paint a lawn. I'll probably have a lot of uh, winter themed stuff going on. I have a uh, ice troll. That was a 3D print that I'm going to do. And it's going to be similar to this color. All of a sudden, my light is like really bright. I'm messing around with my lights. Hold on. <laughs> Seems I got really bright. I also have a fire giant, so I'll probably do, be doing different elemental schemes. And every once in a while, I'll come back and work on smog. I'm just doing a mixture here. Oh, why am I? Camera is all too bright. Oh, I know why. My camera shifted. Hold on a minute. My camera shifted. I leaned in and I knocked it. There we go. There we go. That's better. So did anyone else do any painting or, or hobby stuff? Painting models or painting canvases? Anything like that? Stream's not messing up. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to do any painting or hobby stuff to enjoy. Just want to come in and hang out and chat. That's all. That's always fun. If you have any questions on how I'm doing something, by all means, go ahead and pop them in the chat.
I'll just work on the base coats. Getting all the colors laid out on here. Now her armor is going to be black with uh, purple trim, so that'll be really cool. Her cape, her cloak, will be a nice ice blue, and she'll have an ice. I'll do the same type of ice effect here on her sword, and she's got white platinum blonde hair, and she's got glowing eyes. So, very nice model. I'm very excited. See how this goes. <laughs> Alright, so while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and I only have a black primer, which is a, a dull black. So I want the black armor to be shiny, so I'm going to paint over it with abandoned black. I do not do the 3D printing, I just do the painting. <laughs> uh, my friend. Justin, he does 3D printing. This was actually sculpted by a 3D sculptor. His name was Joshua Black. He he uh, designed it. My friend Justin, he printed it up. And I'm painting them. <laughs> uh, tomorrow night, I have a few other models that I'm painting it's for Justin's D&D uh, &D group that they designed on Hero Forge, the Hero Forge site. Oops. And I'm painting them up. Uh, I do not have them. I do not have them nearby. They're somewhere else. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, they're behind the scenes. I always enjoyed the behind the scenes of movies, knowing how they did it, how they did stuff. So as you can see with this abandoned black, it's a it's a darker darker black. And if while well, I'm covering the black with this, is if I make any mistakes, I can go back with the base coat of the black and it'll match. Try to keep it in frame. I apologize if I go out of frame. Keeping it out of the frame, out of the camera. I apologize. I'm referencing my picture too to see where the black actually goes. Yeah, the model was designed from a game. I think it's a, a 2D role-playing game. I, can't, I don't recall the, the name of it at the moment. I apologize. But uh, a gentleman contacted me on Twitter and asked if I could... Oh, that's it! <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes, Adventure Quest World. That's what it is. I couldn't think of it. Thank you. And the client has sent me many pictures. He's like, I want it like this. I want it like this. So I'm trying to 
do it justice. There's many numerous uh, starter kits from different um, companies. The one that I really like, and it's really reasonably priced, is the Reaper Miniatures set. It comes with paint, uh, brushes, models, a little painting guide on how to do it. I do have the link down below. It's the Reaper Learn to Paint Kit. I think it's number two. And it, it links to Amazon. And I, it was like $30. But I believe there's 11 paints. And they're about this size. They're big paints. They're not like little bits of paint. You get three different models. And it shows you how to paint those models with the paints in there. And you get brushes. Yeah, there's that, there's that one that I have linked in there. That one's the better one. There's one prior to it called um, Basic Painting. I don't have the link down in there. And it's the same thing. It has three, three models. I, I want to say 11 paints and two brushes. And they're about $30. And it comes in a very nice plastic suitcase with foam in it that you can hold your paint in. Very cool. Very nice. The Reaper paints are really cool. I really like them. I have those and I'll be using them from time to time. I was thinking of doing a stream where it's similar to that, where everyone that joins in give enough advance notice to my followers and do a paint -a lawn where I'm painting the model and I'm explaining how to paint it and you're doing it at home. So that we could do that with that paint gut, that uh, paint set, that starter set. That way, if you have any questions, you can answer me on the stream and I can answer it for you right then and there. Right, so her hand is up there. She's got gloves. So I'm thinking of maybe doing that when I get to, you know, at a later date. The paint along should be fun. So I got the black all done. And as you can see between the black armor and this, it's, a, it's definitely a different, when it dries, it's a different tone. All right. So now we're gonna to go to the next color. Which will be her blue cape, her ice blue cloak. Let's look at my colors here. That's the All right. So 
So we're going to base code it with Caliber Sky. These are all uh, Games Workshop Citadel paints that I transfer to dropper bottles. They work really good too. I like I like a wide variety of paints. You never know when you need that one color. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I have a wide a wide collection of paint, almost as bad as a wide collection of models to paint. <laughs> I like the, the Citadel base paints. Yes, it is. I'll be packing it up. Nice. And shipping it out. When I'm done. The base paints I really like because they're a little thicker paint consistency for good base coats. Covers really well over black. May not look like it now, but this will cover in this, usually the second or third one. Third layer. Yes, it does. The this is the base coat, and then I'll be highlighting it up with this one, and then the final highlight with this. So it, it keeps with the blue, the the ice theme, but it also stands out. So this part I gotta be very careful not to get the ice that I painted. to the black but that's okay I can just go over and cover it up again that's what I like about painting if I mess up I can always paint over it Gonna be really difficult to get up up in here with it.
Yes, I like um, the favorite part of the process is the details after the shading. That's a lot of people do different ways, but the majority overall is base coats and then you do um, the dark shadowing and then uh, the highlights, the bright highlights, or they do different variations of that. And it all depends on what type of model you're doing. Uh, it's the highlights. When I start to do the highlights, it really brings it together. Uh, the, the faces. I tend to do the face all the way up. You know, with all the eye, you know, whatever. The eyes, the hair, and things like along those lines. That way, once once I get that, and I'll take forever to do the face too, because you, you want it to make it, you want it to look just right. Um, a lot of times with the eyes, painting the eyes can be a real pain, but once you get that just right, it's when the model really comes together and looks realistic. And you want to keep keep continuing on. It takes on a life of its own almost. Sometimes I'll do one area and complete it from start to finish, base coat, shade, details. But sometimes like I'm doing here, as I'm painting all the base coats, mainly just to see how the colors will work together. So before I get into the detail work, I can readjust the color scheme. And sometimes certain models, they just don't look good no matter what you do, but you just, I, I keep pushing through it. And when I get to those final layers, final highlights, that's when it really pops and it's like, yep, this, this is perfect. This is how I want it. So it's those last final layers putting on there that really bring the model together. Yes, that's when it's all said and done. It's like, ah, oh, there we go. Sometimes at certain models, they just they take forever to to get to that point, and you're you get frustrated. And I'm like, am I doing? Is this looking right? Sometimes it's just best to stop what you're doing, put it aside, work on a different model, and then come back to it. Well, usually when I'm painting up, I'll have a few different ones on the table that I'm working on and I'll go back and forth while I'm waiting for like a base coat or a shade to dry and I'll work on another one and that kind of clears my mind and then I'll come back to what I was working on and in the sense I'm looking at it with as a fresh start like, okay here we go no that didn't look good let's just try this yeah that looks better you know that type of thing Alright, so I did a pretty much one layer of the blue, and there are some spots that you can see the, bait, the primer through it, so I'll let that dry and I'll go over it with another layer. And the other, the next layer will really make that blue bright and, and sharp, so, but yeah, she's coming together, she's looking good. So while I'm waiting for that, let's work on the hair. Alright, 
So she has platinum blonde hair. So I'm going to base coat it with this um, pale, pale white, gray white. And we'll highlight it up with this and then regular white. This isn't the actual the paint. I gotta shake it up and mix it up. It's settled. <laughs> okay, that's all. It's all good now. Okay, there you go. I have a little um, lava bead in in here. these I just put it in the bottle and it's an agitator it helps mix up the mitts up the paint yep. shake it up these are water-based acrylics fast fast drying so they don't take a while to, to dry, like oil oil paints. They usually use for canvases. Well, so now we're gonna paint her hair. In a lot of cases, yes. Sometimes when you're doing blends and you want the nice blend, you want the paint to dry slower. And there's ways to work around that, adding additives like a slow dry additive to the paint that slows down the drying time. What I'm adding to it, the Lamia Medium, that does that. It's a, uh, a thinner, so like a glaze medium. It helps the paint flow better, and it also slows down the drying time a bit. Great for getting nice blends. So as you can see, it doesn't cover the black in one, so I'll have to wait for that to dry and then come back. At this point, I'm being very careful so I don't get paint on the other areas. But like I said, if it happens, it's okay. I can go back and just wait. You know, I wait for the layer to dry and then just go back over with the previous color of that area. They cover they cover over each other really good. Yeah, this will need a few coats to really make it bright. So now I'm waiting for that to dry. I'm going to go back over to the blue and do another coat on that. Certain colors cover really well in one to two coats. Like the brown did really good. The skin took me a few times because it's, it's a paler color and the, the white. So now I'm just going back over and doing another layer of the blue. That's why I make sure that I got it in all the right spots. Get a nice solid color.
you actually want to wait till the first layer dries as it as it's drying if you go back over it with and work it with the brush you can literally pull off the paint that you previously applied and we don't want that Usually that second layer doesn't take much. <laughs> okay, so now that gray on her hair is already dry. And if it doesn't dry, I just lightly blow on it or use a hair dryer. Sorry, out of frame. All right. So now her sword. I'm not going to buy. I'm not going to base coat the sword at the moment. I'll do that at a later date. But she's also got some fur lining around her kneecap right here. This is actually, she's attached, the base is attached with um, two sided sticky tape on just a uh, spray can, rattle can cap. It's a two-sided sticky tape, and it just attached. And it's it's quite, you know, once it's on there, you press it down, it holds it really good. I also have old medicine bottles, stick them on top. Wooden candle holders that I picked up at a hobby store. Just put those on top there. There's also Games Workshop's Citadel holder. Those ones are really nice because it's got the spring in there. They just push it in there and it holds it. The problem with this, it only holds up to a certain size. So this big model the base, it wouldn't have fit into this handle. Some people use a uh, blue tack, like poster tack. That's right here. Yeah. Yeah, I know all the tricks, and I'm always, I'm still learning. <laughs> I find what works best for me.
All right. So now she's looking. All the base coats are dry. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the face. I don't know all the tricks. I'm still, you know, after 25 plus years of doing this, I'm still learning. So I enjoy learning new tricks and tips and things like that. And I like to share and show people how to do it. All right, so the skin tone. <laughs> yes, definitely. Don't be afraid to paint. You know, just to pick up a brush and a model and some paints and just go to and have fun. That's the whole thing about it. Don't expect to have great results. You're going to make mistakes. That's the way of learning. It's not so much the end result it's the adventure and the traveling to that area learning learning it that's the best part of the adventure all right i'm going to give her skin a um sepia it's a yellowish brown wash it's a light brown i'm going to do that first and see where that goes very subtle just to add some color to her and I forgot to add the fur so I'm waiting for that to dry. I'll go ahead and add, be the same color as her hair. Yeah, if I can inspire you to paint and and learn some new tricks or even you tell me about some new stuff just to get you to paint and, and ins inspiration that that be a good good feeling. It was nice meeting you. Thanks for coming in and joining in. Yeah, if I don't finish her on a stream, I will. Uh, I always post the finished pictures on my Facebook and Twitter pages. So the links are down below in the social media section. So please go ahead and click on that and follow me there. Thank you for joining. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night.
All right. So that skin tone is dry. Now we're going to go in with some Reichland Flesh Shade, which is a little more redder brown. Add some color to her face in certain areas. I'm not going to do an all over wash. I'm going to go into um, the deeper shadows. Got the eye sockets around the nose, over the lips, the cheeks underneath her chin. what's called a recess shade. I'm just painting in the recesses, hence the word, uh, the title. <laughs> I'm also putting this under her crown, the brim just to help define the shading. I gotta be careful as it's drying, I don't wanna pull up any of that shade. Oh, there we go. So while that's drying, I'm going to go to a different area and apply a shade on that area. So we're going to do an Ad Rats Earth Shade, which is a nice dark brown. And we're going to put that over the brown areas, the leathers of her pants, and then her arms here. Thank you, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm just put I'm just pulling the paint the wash what the shade is or wash it's very thin down paint almost like a watercolor and applying it over the area it will settle and recess into the it'll settle down into the recesses and just make instant shading Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do the sword on a stream just to show, just so you can see it. <laughs> I think I'll continue on with her um, on tomorrow's stream. I might be starting the stream sooner than 7. Like I did today. Started at 5. So now that we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and put that over the same shade over the fur on our boots. And I'll just darken it out and make it look kind of dirty. And I'll give it a, a, it'll be the same highlights as I do her hair, but it's a different shading, so it'll still look different. All right, so her skin tone is very red now because of the Reichland Flesh Shade. I want to cut that redness down, so I'm going to do a, a um, Atholian Camel Shade, which is a like an olive green shade, and the green and the red will cancel each other out and it'll make it look natural. So I'm going to paint in the same area 
that I did before with the flesh shade just in the deeper recesses and it just helps cancel out that redness and it's very subtle but it just adds some more shading to it For that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and apply a shade of the blue on the cloak. Do the Drakenoff nightshade. But with this, I'm going to paint in the recesses and up in the, the deep shadows because I don't want to cover the whole area. <laughs> yeah. Yes, one guy designed it, and then he sent the file to my friend who lives here um, in Minnesota. He printed it, and then I'm painting it. Because of the process was really good you know we all got along well we'll probably be doing some more projects like that where we design it uh, Joshua Black he'll print it I mean he'll he'll sculpt it in the, the print um, and the yeah, start that over again he'll sculpt it on the computer send the files to my friend Justin who will print it and then I'll paint them so you probably see those on the stream as well also Justin and I are printing uh, he's printing up pieces for me to use for tutorials for um, classes that I run And also for my video tutorials on Patreon. And that I'll also be doing here. painting this down in the deep shadows behind her that's going to be darker it's the shadowing I'm just making sure it's not pulling it's just a nice smooth layer to go back with paint and paint this in a little easier it's not not working quite white quite right so I'm just gonna paint it in with a darker color we'll let that dry and we'll come back I'm just gonna paint in the dark shading with the dark purple dark navy blue the shading is all blotchy it doesn't look right and that's what I mean about you know if something doesn't work just wait for it to dry and paint over it all right so now the skin tone her face is dry so I'm going to go back in 
the real deep shadows with my brown shade. She has glowing eyes, so I don't have to worry about painting a pupil or anything. Just the same thing where I was, just to darken the shadows under the nose, under the cheek, chin, the eye sockets. dry neck is in my picture she's got blackened eyes with glowing pupils It can be. That's why I asked for this one to be printed up bigger. <laughs> Some of the other models that I painted. That's a normal size one. <laughs> Compared to her. So... This one, I tend not to do very high detail because the sculpt's pretty tiny. But I've been enjoying painting larger models. Yeah, it is quite a difference. And then I have this guy. This is the first uh, miniature bust that I painted up, and I just I enjoyed it so much. I could go right in there and do all this detail. And I've done like really tiny ones that are about like the size of. <laughs> my pinky that's the length of the the model those are really tiny yeah he turned out really cool i really like how he turned out and it's just the same you know base coat shading highlight and i just went back and forth I added some uh, gloss varnish so it's kind of shiny on his eyes and his nose, on his lips, and in certain areas. Like around his, his the spine is actually protruding out of his back. It's a strange, strange model. <laughs> Looks like he has gills. It's not uh, fat folds. He actually has gills. It's got the lines in there for a game called Carnival. Strange little skirmish game. That, that's what I like about doing commissions. I, I get to see all these different... I get to work on so many different uh, models and games that normally I wouldn't know about. So now that I got all the shading done on the face, I'm going to go to my base coat and reapply the base coat, but just in the raised areas, like on the bridge of the nose, forehead, cheeks, the upper lip, you know, down on the chin, 
and then a little bit on the on the chest. And that base coat is a mixture of these two colors, Rakar Flesh and Flayed One Flesh, to get kind of a pale tone. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the Flayed One Flesh for additional highlights, and then add the Pallid Witch Flesh, which is an off-white pale skin tone. And I'm thinning it just a little bit with Lamia Medium to help it flow and translucency. sure it's flowing well. So I'm bringing my brush up to the high point and when I remove the brush that's where the, the pigment will come off the brush so you'll get that a brighter highlight that way. So just this is why you want to make sure that your paint's flowing really well. You don't want it too watery or too thick. That's why I use my brush, my, my brush. I drag my brush across my thumb to see the consistency. Yep, that's the reason why. <laughs> It's just, it's an easy, I can see right here and there how the consi the consistency of the paint is. Sometimes after sessions, I'll, my finger will be very, <laughs> you can tell what colors I use, but sometimes it'll be very uh, brightly colored depending on what I've painted. And I've gone out to run errands and didn't wash my finger. And gone to the store and people look at my thumb. And they're like, oh, is that a tattoo? No, it's just paint. A little too bright. So I'm going to go back with some of the sepia. And just tone down our cheek a bit. Smooth out that paint. <laughs> Hashtag thumb art. Yes. Uh, no, not really. My wife, my wife does, and that's her right there who did the hashtag thumb art. <laughs> that's my wife. She's she's more of the two D 
artist. I'm more of the 3D artist. I've always wanted to do some 2D stuff. I just haven't had a chance to, to do it. Always get you set up, Danielle. Hint, hint. <laughs> I share some of her pieces on my Facebook page. To Nathan, if you uh, follow me on that. She's done some really cool pieces recently with... Um, pouring paint onto the canvas and just kind of swishing it around. All right, so I just added some more um, flayed one flush to my mitts previous mixture. And we're going to add a little bit more um, Lamia Medium. Just, I want to make it thin, translucent almost. That's usually how skin is. the highlights I just go in the same area lighter and lighter areas almost like building a foundation of like a pyramid almost of highlights Was that the rainbow one, Danielle? Yeah, that one's really neat. I like that one. <laughs> Crazy cool. Yeah, and basically she just poured it onto the, the the palette and then took a swiggle stick and swiggle it through. <laughs> Very neat. Alright, so now I'm gonna add some pallid witch flesh and start brightening this up. Yes, making a mess. <laughs> That's where all the great artwork comes from. This is making a mess.
kind of going back and forth if it's too much of a contrast in the shading area I just go back with the sepia and smooth it out Do some more, just a couple more highlights with the palette, which flesh added to it. It's not quite as pale as I want it. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. <laughs> Is it Archidias? Thank you. Thank you for following. Welcome. Just working on some skin tone on Samira the Ice Queen here. happy with how she's looking. Now her eyes and is like I showed in the picture is very dark and it's that you know blackened eyes with a bright blue turquoise look to it. But I don't think I'm gonna try working on that now. So Let's go and work on some of the leathers here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, she's she's really fun to paint. I'm enjoying it. So I got her and I she had a little kitty cat that's gonna go with her that I finished up. I'm gonna do the base on her late on that later. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to the browns. So I'll go back to my base coat, which was dryad bark. Excuse me, with a little bit of Garthor brown added to it. I shaded it down with Adrat's Earth Shade, which is a brown, dark brown wash. I'm gonna do another one of this in the deeper shadows, the recesses, just to darken it up. going to do the undersides with this just to make the, the shadows darker. There's 
not much detail on these areas. So it almost looks like they're skin tight leathers. Let me look at my picture real quick. I have a reference picture on mine. Alright. Yeah, I'll do her face her eyes and the rest of her face at a later time. <laughs> I don't know yet. I don't know. I probably not. Like to be honest, I wanna wait to do that last. Cause I have all this other area to do. And I don't want to take the chance of messing it up. So. I'll work on her tomorrow. I'll work on that tomorrow too. So. You'll have to wait till then. <laughs> Sorry Nathan. <laughs> well, I'm killing you smalls. Right, so now that that's dry. I'm going to go in with my known oil which is a black wash on the same area of the leathers and just do that in the deep recesses and underneath so that will be the darker shading For that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint in the, the shading of the cloak. So I'm going to use a darker navy blue, the cantor blue. But I'm going to add a little bit of base coat into it so it keeps it all together. This is Calador blue, or I'm sorry, Calador sky blue that bright blue just add a little bit into the shade and keep the color consistent Here is my base coat. It's kind of shiny from the light, and then the shadow is slightly darker. Because just by itself, there's a definite shift. And I'll do this on its own in the deep recesses. Because that shade that I did just it didn't, it didn't look right. It was blotchy. Yeah, much better.
Yeah, that looks much better. Nice color shift. There we go. Sometimes it, you know, you don't need to use a wash shade. Just painting in a darker color in the recesses. That's all it needs. All right. So we'll let that dry, and then I'll come back with some of that Cantor blue. But I'm going to add, that's not it, I'm going to add some more. I'm going to add a purple tone to it, the streamer pink, it's kind of like a burgundy. But this added with the blue will give me a nice, uh, not, not a magenta, but um, uh, like a nice purple, muted purple. <laughs> it's a raid! Thank you, John! <laughs> Yay, my first raid! I'm excited, thank you! Welcome. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Thank you, John. Thank you for following, and thank you for the raid. Hey, it's the guys from More Than Dice Podcasts. Call me KC. Hey, Gonzo. Nice to see you. I am painting... Uh... Samara, the Ice Queen. It's a 3D print that was sculpted by Joshua Black and then printed by my friend Justin. And I'm painting it up for, for a client. So she's she's been really fun. It's quite big, but I'm happy with it. So just working through the base coats and some shading. This is the artwork. I didn't shine from my light, sorry. This is the artwork I'm using as a reference. <laughs> the light's reflecting off my tablet. So. All right. So let's go ahead and do that darker shading. Like I said, I'm doing a mixture of Cantor Blue and some Screamer Pink from the Citadel line. So it's it's a, a deep burgundy type color. And mixing it together will be a nice dark purple on the blue, blue side. <laughs> yes, in dropper bottles. Yes, I transferred all my Citadel paints to dropper bottles. So, as you can see, it's a little bit darker. So, that's my base coat. If it's still wet, that's why it's shining. That was the, the shade, which was a little bit of the Cantor with a base coat. And then the, this mixture. Excuse me. And adding the pink burgundy color as the deepest shadows it adds some warmth to all the cool colors all the, the on the color wheel spectrum so we're going to thin that a little bit with Lamia medium like I've been doing with all the other paints So this is going to go into the deeper, even deeper recesses. Just 
what they're calling spit blending to soften that edge. Uh, not sure if it shows up. Paint's too watery. If I wanted to go even darker, I would probably add a dark red to that mix, the corn red, to make it even darker. But I'm happy with that for now. I can always come back and deepen it. And followers that's the most I've had <laughs> thank you all for joining me still pretty new to the twitch stuff so I appreciate you guys coming in <laughs> yes, I was looking into doing that, Gonzo. So hopefully real soon I'll be able to do that. Doing some Facebook streaming. Yeah, I like that purple added in there in the shadows. Yeah, tonight I just decided, hey, let's go, I'm painting, let's do a stream. And it's actually turned out really well. I've been getting a lot of people coming in and hanging out. I think I'll start doing Wednesdays. <laughs> What I'm doing here is a, a blending technique. Uh, it's down below, Gonzo, in the under the commissions. It's Holt Mini Paint at Gmail. Hold on one second, and I'll type that in. There you go, just in case you didn't see it down there. Sweet, I will respond to that when I'm done here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now is that the uh, the Facebook group? Because I know I follow that, but or is this something different? Is this the for doing uh, Facebook streams? Oh, okay. Sweet. Thank you very much. All right. 
right, so we got the shading done. I'm happy with on the, the, the blue. Adding that pink and making a, a purple. Really deepen those shadows to make it look really cool. So I'm really liking that. So we'll continue on working on the cape. I'll go back to my base coat of Calador Sky. No, that's fine. You go eat. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a nice meal. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Lurkers. What are you working on, John? Oh, sweet. For the uh, Star Wars Legion? my blue I'm going to do the Calidor Sky base coat but I'm going to add a little bit of the Techless blue into it and add some Lamia medium to keep it thin and running well. Nice. I played a game of that. It was really fun. Um, it was also pretty dangerous because I'm a huge... I enjoy the original trilogy of Star Wars. And that's all about it. And <laughs> those models look really nice. I would love to pick up those and just paint them up. But I have so many other things that I'm working on. It's one of those. It's like, do I or do I, don't I? So now I'm just adding highlights. Ah, oh, yeah, I know. I'm sure Boba Fett's gonna be sweet. I was I was very tempted to get into the uh, not the Armada or the X Wing. What was the other one? The the board game one that they had. I was trying. I'm trying to think of that one. Um, that's uh, what is it? Assault Star Wars Assault. Was that the board game with the miniatures? Oh, Rebellion. Okay. Imperial Assault. That's it. That's right. It's a dangerous thing because I live in Minnesota where Fantasy Flight Games is located. And I go there to game every once in a while. And they have the big display of all their Star Wars stuff. And get to see all the nice shinies. <laughs> In fact, I did some work for them for their Rune Wars games. I painted up some starter sets for demos for them. So that was really fun. Really nice guys over there and gals. Oh, I forgot the shade up there. All right, let's go back to our shadows. Yeah, I think it, that would just be one of those games that I just pick up the models and paint. 
just like everything else I do. <laughs> I don't get a whole... I enjoy gaming, but I'm more of a, a hobbyist. I enjoy painting more. When I started out, there wasn't a whole lot of gaming stores in my area, and I didn't have any people to play games with, but I just I enjoy painting models, and I just hone my craft that way. But yeah, those models for the Star Wars Legion are really nice. If they're coming out with a Boba Fett, oh, that's, that's tempting. The snow, the snow speeder was really cool looking. Those would be fun. They would, those would be fun to paint. So just building up the the highlights. Yeah, it is. It is amusing to play when the demo I did. Um, I was. The dark side. I was the Empire. And Darth Vader. Oh, he is, he's a killing machine. He just goes in there and... <laughs> going around and just picking off the rebels right and left. It was fun. So now I'm just hitting the very high points of the model with this lighter blue. I want to keep the majority of it kind of dark because it's the contrast. And right here in the Yes, and in fact, that was my favorite part of Rogue One. That's the, on the only part of the movie that I remember is when Vader goes through and kills them all. And, and it's the transition, that, that little bit. <laughs> That's all I remember from that movie. I've seen a fan edit where it's the last battle and, you know, like basically the last hour of the movie. They had the... the the scroll at the beginning leading it up you know the summary of the rest of the movie and then it was the that battle at the end and then them getting the plans and then vader going through and at the very end and that was it and to me that was more than enough the movie it was an enjoyable movie it just seemed kind of why it didn't why it needed to be that long it was kind of boring in some parts. But I haven't been a big fan of the new Star Wars stuff. I'm old school. That's why I like the look of Star Wars Legion, because it's all the original trilogy.
She just looks really weird without doing the pupils. <laughs> I'm gonna do those later. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the Nets highlight, a thern blue, into the previous mixture. Very fine detail work here. In the highlights. I might have to go back in and do a couple glazes to smooth out the transitions here. Sometimes it's hard to get good blends with the Citadel paints. Yeah, I'll go back over with some glazes. Help smooth that out. Checking under my light to see how where the highlights should be. Nice little trick. that dry before I do the glaze over it. So let's go back to the leathers and we'll add some Gorthor Brown. Is there other games that you paint, John, when you play, or just the uh, Star Wars Legion?
Ah, uh, yeah, it's always nice to have a nice setup. <laughs> What other games do you play? Is it mainly uh, tabletop games or do you play uh, board games, card games? A little bit of everything. <laughs> I'm just adding little dashes and stuff to make that look like texture. Anything non-collectible. <laughs> Very nice. You have a favorite one that you play? Of any of those categories? <laughs> I recently just picked up the uh, the Munchkin game playing with the family and we enjoy that right now it's legion very nice yeah it looks like a good game it looks like a fun game i enjoyed the the demo i had but like i said i already have too many games that i don't play <laughs> that i collect i like um I'm a big lord of the rings fan so i have a lot of the um Middle Earth strategy battle game miniatures that I paint up and collect. Majority of my streams have been painting Smog, that model. Star Realms? I've heard of that. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to play that. Alright, so we're going to add a little bit more of the Gorthor Brown to the mitts. Just slowly building up the layers and the textures. To get around the smoothness of it, I'm adding just doing dashes with the brush. You know, like this, just dashes to give it texture. my computer telling me I need to stop streaming for a bit. I've been streaming almost four hours now. Three and a half. This is the longest I've been. It's usually I do a two hour thing, and right now I'm at three, about three and a half. But I think I'm going to be ending it, oh, within the next half hour by nine. Adding dash marks on the raised areas. Wow, an all day cast. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> this one's actually been pretty good because I've had people come in and out and chatting. So, and this was just kind of a spur of the moment. Hey, let's do this. All right, so now I'm going to add a lighter color, Bane Blade, brown, kind of a khaki color into my mitts, just for the final highlights.
I've heard of Menelth John. I think I may have talked to him a couple times here and there through uh, messaging. Yeah, I've heard a lot of you know those all-day chats for charities is very cool. Would love to do that in the near future. I've done some um, charity work for local Dungeons and Dragons stuff before he retired. <laughs> yeah. Where I've painted up some character, you know, some models for local charities for Dungeons and Dragons. So those are always fun to do. Yeah, so with this highlight, I'm just doing tap, tap, tap with the brush and just kind of like in a regular pattern just to give it some texture to make it look like it's leather. Yeah, definitely do that. Those are always fun, and it's always for a good cause, so I enjoy doing that. Give back to the community. I'm not sure if you can see the texture yet. It's not quite pronounced. All right. More colors. It's more of the lighter color, just to bring that up. I'm going to get my smaller brush for this. Usually when I'm done streaming, I'll take a picture of what I worked on during the stream and I show it off on my Facebook and Twitter pages. The links are down below. So, John, if you would like to see some more of my work, please check out the links below. So kind of give you a heads up when I'm planning on doing streaming. Right now I'm just trying to find what nights and hours work. So I'm doing a wide variety this week. Like I said, this was a spur of the moment. And it turned out really well. So so I'd say it's a success. Successful stream. Some mini S's. <laughs> All right. Yes, that the follow will help you with that. I appreciate that. I got a lot of followers tonight, which was really cool. So. All right. So I got the leather to a point that I'm happy with, and the blue. Let's see, what else can I work on for now? Let's do the hair. Let's work on the hair. Yes, the starter paint kits are really cool. Are you looking at the, uh, the Reaper ones or is there some other ones that you're looking at? I kind of keep an eye out on those and 
help suggest them. I've usually, I've picked them up myself and tried them out, see if they're worthwhile. Here. I'm not sure how I want to shade her hair. Okay. Yeah, blue would not be good. Right, I got some dark gray. And my palette here will thin that out and make a wash. down with the Malami medium to get it to a, a wash consistency. Yeah, those there's um there's a few different ones. I think I think there's two of them. There's the core basics one and then the layer one. The layer one is the link I have down below. That one I find is really good if you have already know how to paint, but the basic ones is really good. They each come with three miniatures, two brushes, and I want to say 11 paints. Full Reaper paints, which are these, for about $30, and, and then the painting guide. For about thirty dollars, and that nice um, black plastic case, it's like a suitcase, and it's got um, foam in it to hold it, hold your stuff in. Really nice sets, and like I was saying, if people pick those up, we could do a. Uh, a paint -alon on stream where I, I'll paint the models and we can go through the through it and you can ask me questions and things like that we can show it off in fact one of those models this is still too thick it didn't wash but that's all right One of those models from one of the sets was a wizard that I painted up for a charity work, a recent charity. Yeah, I think I'm starting to lag. Yeah, everything in those sets are, are really good quality. actually wash. <laughs> that was still too thick. That's okay. We'll let that dry and we'll do a glaze of the blue over the cloak.
and smooth out some of the the layering. But I'm and also trying to deepen the blue, which is good. That's exactly what the glaze should do. on the, her hair and finish that up tonight and that, we'll call that an evening. So with the hair, I'm not doing every single strand. I'm just doing, just highlighting like I would normally. And but but I'm making just thin lines, like so, to make it simulate the hair strands. So I got a very fine tip brush. Make sure the paint's flowing well. You can see that. Now the sculpt is, this part's raised, this is recessed, this is raised. So I'm just a little bit right in there, and right up here. Twitch is telling me that I've been streaming too long. I need to stop. <laughs> Not sure if the getting a log a lot of lag or what. to our nut color, Arthurian gray, which is a very pale gray, very light gray, bluish gray, I should say. I'm just going to do the same thing, but in a smaller area, more prominent area.
Sometimes you can use the side of your brush. I'll just go like this. I'll get you nice straight lines. Oh, that's the wrong color. So now, final highlight will be white, the white scar. just where the brighter highlights are going to be. The uh, glaze is dried. I'm going to go back with my um, highlight of the blue real quick and then just touch up some areas. Just the more prominent areas just to bring back that highlight. All right, I think I'm done for the night. <laughs> Thank you. It is uh, the pretzel rocks. It's a, a copyright free or royalties free. That's a site that I just have playing in the background. And if you like the songs, you can always click on the, the links in the chat. All right, so that is where I'm going to stop for the night. Got a lot of done honor. I just need to do. Well, I'm sitting here and thinking about it. Let's do the fur right here. So got some fur. Trim. Good night, John. Thank you for for stopping in. See you on the next one. Ah, cool. Very nice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Thank you all for coming in tonight and following me and just hanging out chatting away and I will see you on the next one the next one will be tomorrow it's scheduled for seven I might start it sooner just because I enjoyed that time 
at five today. So, but keep an eye out for the notifications. So, all right. Thank you very much. I'll have a good night, and I'll see you next time. Good night.